Let's now move to a third very important application of duration, which is asset liability management. Okay, But before we get there, we need to change a little bit our definition of duration. Okay, so what, what we will want to do is to compute the duration of zero investment portfolios. Okay, so what are zero investment portfolios? These are portfolios that have both a short and a long leg. And the amount that we are going to have in the short leg, which we are going to borrow, is going to be the same amount as we are going to have in the long leg that we are going to invest. So if the two values are the same, the value of the portfolio itself is zero. Okay. So now we have a problem because we want to compute the duration of something whose price is zero. And if you recall, in the basic definition of duration, we were dividing by zero. But, sorry, by price. And now the price is zero, so therefore we cannot do that. We cannot divide by the, the, by the price. Okay. So we have to change the measure of duration. So what we're going to do is we're going to define this new measure called dollar duration, which basically just keeps what is important in the in the standard definition of duration recall in the in the in the section before when we talked about duration we said that what is really important about duration is that duration is a derivative it's the derivative of the price with respect to interest rates and that's the only thing that matters so we're just going to keep that we are going that that's the this part that we have here we're going to keep this which is the important part and we are not going to to do the division by price Okay, and that was not doing anything anyway, so it does not matter. So we're not going to divide by price. We're still keeping the minus sign here in front so that this becomes a positive number, but also this minus is not important. So what again, what is really important is the derivative. Okay, so that's the, our new measure of duration. Now, if we are talking about a simple security with a positive price, like a standard fixed coupon bond or a standard floating rate bond, we are going to compute this new dollar duration starting from the standard duration that we already know how to compute. So we compute the standard duration and then multiply by price. And then when we multiply this by price, we cancel the, the, the price that was in the new denominator of this old duration and we get this new dollar duration, All right? Uh, this name of dollar duration is actually a bit misleading because it suggests that this uh, this uh, duration comes in units of dollars, which is not the case. It never comes in units of dollars, as I as I explain here. But um, this is the name that is used in the book that we are following by, by Veronesi, so I'll, I'll just keep using the same same name of dollar duration. Okay. Now we have a, a couple of formulas to compute the standard duration. For this new dollar duration, we just need to use one formula. Well, actually two formulas. We need to, to use this first one to, 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 to go from the old duration to the new duration, the, the, dollar, the new dollar duration. But then once we have the dollar duration of individual securities, I just need one more formula, which is the dollar duration of a portfolio. Okay, And this is the, the, the formula. The dollar duration of the portfolio is um, sort of an average of uh, individual dollar durations sort of an average because this is no longer the weight as it was in the dollar in the in the simple duration of a portfolio now what we have here is actually is n is actually the the quantity of the security okay so uh, the quantity we mean in when prices are uh, expressed as percentages of face value this quantity is the 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 notional of the security that we are that we are purchasing the face value okay Okay, so before we actually do asset liability management, let look, let's look at this simple example, which is qu quite interesting. So what we are doing here is we are going to go back to um, a repo trade, which we discussed in the, in the first class. Okay, And uh, if you recall, a repo trade is just a way to finance a long position in a, in a bond. So we borrow money, and we invest in the bond. And this same bond is given as collateral in, in the repo trade, okay? This is a long short portfolio in the sense that it is the same amount of money that I am borrowing in and investing. So the price is zero for me. But as we will see here, this is not 
a risk-free trade okay even though the price is zero this will be risky if interest rates change i may uh, lose or gain uh, money all right so let's let's see the details so let's assume that the term structure is flat let's say four uh, percent uh, with some annual compounding or th which corresponds to 396 with continuous compounding okay and here is the trade so long position we are going to buy a 10-year treasury bond uh, paying a coupon of four percent and then uh, we are going to borrow this uh, sorry we're going to finance this through uh, a repo trade okay so let's let's look at the at the bond position first so uh, it's a 10-year paying four percent coupons semi-annually and if the price is um sorry not the price if the interest rate is four percent i can immediately say that the price is 100 percent okay if the coupon rate is equal to the discount rate then the price is equal to face value 100 percent then I can compute the duration. Okay? It's, a, it's a long calculation because this is a 10-year bond. There, there are a lot of coupons. I have to do a long calculation, but I mean, this, there's nothing uh, tricky here. It's just a long calculation. I can easily do this in Excel and um, get the number. Okay, so I did that. It's 834 years. Okay, so the dollar duration of of the bond, of this coupon bond, is just using this this relation that we saw here before that gives me the dollar duration as a function of the simple duration just price times the simple duration so 100 percent times 834 years gives me a dollar duration of 834 years all right now the the the, the short leg of the trade is the repo trade okay so we're going to fund the long position through a repo let's say it's a six month term repo okay so this means that I'm going to borrow for six months at, the, at an interest rate that is defined now. And six months from now, I will get a new interest rate, right? If I if I keep the, the repo going for, for a long period, okay? So this looks exactly like what? This looks exactly like a floating rate bond. So this is the same as borrowing through a floating rate bond with a, with a, a coupon period of six months right so uh, what is the what is the duration of that uh, as we have seen before the a floating rate bond has a duration equal to the the time until the next reset date in this case six months so this would be 0 0.5 years the price at the reset date as we have seen before is 100 percent so this is one and therefore the dollar duration which is just d times p is going to equal 0 0.5 years all right now um, as i was saying this trade even though it has it requires zero investment it is not risk-free right so let's measure the the risk of the portfolio let's assume that we are considering the trader is considering buying 10 million of face value of the bond okay so that's the size of this trade and let's use this new concept of dollar, dollar duration to actually see what is the risk of this trade? Okay, so let me open a figure. Okay, so this this was what we just discussed: the long position, the investment in the in this ten-year bond. The short position is a floating rate bond with six months uh, of of coupon period. Uh, this we did all this so far. Okay, so now let's look at the combined portfolio again for a size of ten million. The notional is ten million. Okay. The point is that even though this costs zero today at time zero, the value of the portfolio is zero, and the name zero investment portfolio, we will conclude that this is not risk free. Okay, what's the duration, the dollar duration of the portfolio? Using that formula we saw for the dollar duration of a portfolio before, it is just the, the sum of the n time d's of the individual positions. Okay, so we have the long and the short. So for the long, n is the same, the dollar duration of the long is this dollar duration that we have here at 34 years and then short therefore with a minus sign the same amount and the dollar duration of the short that we have seen here okay so we can write we can put the n in front 10 million dollars and then do the difference between the two dollar durations okay in years 
So what we get here is, if we do this calculation, 78.4. And now this comes in this weird unit, right? Because I have dollars or millions of dollars here. And then this difference comes in years. So the product of these two things gives me units of million dollars years. So money times years, okay? I don't know what this means, right? What What is 78.4 million dollar times years? Um, I have no intuition for that. So to, to get something more intuitive, let's do the type of uh, exercise that we have done before, which is let's see what happens to the value of my portfolio if interest rates change by a little bit. So let's say if interest rates go up by one basis point, what happens to my portfolio? So the idea is that I can use the same type of pro approximation that we used before for the simple duration. Now, in this case, the dollar duration, by definition, was equal to minus the derivative of the price with respect to interest rates. When the change in interest rates is not infinitesimal, when it is actually a discrete larger amount, this becomes just an approximation, right? So the change in price is just going to be approximately equal to the product of these two things, the duration and the change in rates. So the change in price, or here I'm calling it the change in the value of the portfolio becomes approximately equal to minus the duration of the portfolio times the change in interest rates. Okay. So minus the du dollar duration of the portfolio just that we just put here times the change in interest rates that I'm assuming. So I'm assuming an increase of one basis point. So plus one basis point here. Now the interest rate is always a value per year. We say that the interest rate is 10% per year. 2% per year, whatever. So the, the units are some number per year. Okay. So that's what this means here per year. One over Y. Okay. So that's, that's uh, good because now the, these years cancel out. Okay. So when I do this multiplication, this year cancel with this year to minus one, and I get just units of money, dollars, which I can understand. So if interest rates go up by one basis point, my value goes down by seven thousand eight hundred and forty dollars okay and this i can understand right so this is a unit dollars that i, I know what it means okay so th the point is that this portfolio costs zero but it is not risk-free if interest rates change in particular if interest rates go up i lose money okay so intuitively what's going on here basically i lose money because i have two legs that don't move in the same direction when interest rates or don't move by the same amount when interest rates change right i have one leg a long leg that is a fixed rate bond that is very long that has a very high duration so if interest rates change this bond will change by a lot but then i have a short leg which does not which is not so sensitive to interest rates it's a floating rate bond so if interest if interest rates change this bond will also change, but just a little bit, not as much as the long bond. So this mismatch between the long and the short side makes uh, or uh, generates uh, risk to my portfolio. Okay. Again, if interest rates go up, I lose money. If interest rates go down, I make money. 